Hello everyone, my name is Jack Sorrell, and today, let's see if the Nintendo Wii can hold up in 2019 and still be a fun and useful gaming console. The Nintendo Wii is currently Nintendo's highest selling home console of all time, selling over 100 million units worldwide and having the most unique game library of any console. It was released in 2006, making it now 12 years old. The Wii experience is quite dated in various ways, compared to the games of today, designed to run on more recent hardware. The Wii was discontinued in October of 2013, its multiplayer game server shut down in May of 2014, and its online store, the Wii Shop channel, was shut down in January of 2019. In almost every way, the Wii is a dead console, getting no updates or support from Nintendo anymore. But there is one way to give your Wii a whole new life, and that's through modified software and custom made apps better known as Homebrew. Let's see what this thing can do, and if it holds up in 2019. Shouting out our channel supporters, we have Alexandi1, Boxfish, Christian, The Gamer SK, Richard Smith, North Act, Robocop, Chuck Smith, and Extreme Boy Plays XDDD. So, a huge shout out and thank you to them. By the way, I'm changing the rewards for channel supporters. To see the new rewards, check my Patreon page, which is linked down below. The rewards will change for existing supporters next month. Let's say you bought a brand new Wii today, which came completely clean, with no downloaded games or extra channels. There isn't anything you can do really, apart from use the incredibly slow internet browser. But with an SD card and a funny looking letter, we can install Homebrew and get this Wii in shape. Let's look at emulators first. An emulator is a program or app which lets you run games from other consoles on your device, which can't run natively on your hardware. This NES emulator app, which can be downloaded and accessed via Homebrew, runs NES games perfectly on the Wii. Let's have a look at the emulators I enjoy using on my Wii. First of all, we have FCE Ultra GX, which emulates NES games like I said. Next up is SNES 9X GX which emulates SNES games of course. This emulator also works perfectly, but I don't recommend using a Wii Remote to control this one, there just isn't enough buttons on the controller. This one's called Visual Boy Advance GX, which emulates Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Now here's Wii 64, which as you can guess, emulates Nintendo 64 games. And for this one, I recommend using a Wii Remote and Nunchuck, a Wii Classic controller, or a GameCube controller. A standard Wii Remote won't cut it, there just isn't enough buttons. And finally, here's a GameCube game running perfectly on the Wii. And of course, I recommend using a real GameCube controller. Okay. That's a lot of emulators. This makes my Wii a near all-in-one console, emulating the NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, and GameCube. The Wii technically doesn't emulate GameCube, it actually runs on the native hardware, making it run just as well as an actual GameCube. And don't forget, there's plenty more emulators available to download. It makes playing my favourite games from different consoles easy by having them all on one device. But there's many more emulators out there too, I'm just interested in these ones. The Wii only outputs at standard resolution 480p, but these old games still look okay when being played on the Wii. Emulators are awesome on the Wii, but on the hardware side of things, the Wii is home to an extremely useful disk drive. Of course it was designed to read Wii game discs, but with this homebrew app, we can slide in any old DVD, and it will let us watch our old movies, box sets, and personally burn DVDs on our Wii. DVD players and DVD drives on computers are decreasing quickly. Nintendo should have built this feature into the Wii if you ask me, but there's 12 years too late. It's a good thing this homebrew application exists. It makes the Wii not only an emulation powerhouse, but a respectable media player too. 
and the Wii Remote Pointer makes it more fun and intuitive to use compared to a normal DVD player. Next up, let's look at the Wii's game library. It's huge, but now that the Wii Shop channel is shut down, we're going to have to rely on game discs. A massive amount of games just disappeared overnight, as most games which were on the Wii Shop channel were not released on discs. A few notable games can actually connect to online servers, so that you can enjoy using online multiplayer using Homebrew. These servers are not owned by Nintendo, but do work near flawlessly in an extremely small amount of games which are supported. The main and most popular game is Mario Kart Wii, which still has an active community, consisting of speedruns, online multiplayer, and modded content, like tracks, characters and more. There are many other games which you can buy in disc form, but Mario Kart Wii seems to be the most active. You can still have lots of fun playing local multiplayer games with friends, like New Super Mario Bros Wii, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, and lots more. And don't forget, if you get bored playing the same game over and over and over, you can install some mods to make your game even more interesting, like tracks, characters and sounds. In Mario Kart Wii for example, there's mods which add entirely new tracks to the game, which were made by players and have unique add-ons compared to the standard tracks. So if you still have an old Wii lying around, let me know in the comments, and also let me know if this video encouraged you to install some homebrew on the Wii, like an emulator, maybe a DVD player or anything. I'd love to hear about it. If you want to install homebrew on your Wii, click the i in the top right hand corner now to see my easy tutorial. Well, that's all for today. My name's Jack Sorrell and I'll see you next Sunday with a brand new video.